Good afternoon and good morning, everybody. It's Terry Justin, Global Vice President, HR Strategies Consulting here. Um, we're going to be conducting our webinar series called Inside Edge. Today, the focus is on, on success factors compensation. Um, so what we're going to be doing is taking a look at compensation. Um, lots of times our customers implement compensation and uh, never turn on the full functionality inside the solution and get stagnant in what they're doing in compensation. So we just wanna remind everybody today about some of the other features and characteristics inside of compensation and some of the areas that SAP is addressing even um, more advanced compensation inside of the success factor suite. So welcome and thanks for taking your time uh, and sharing today with us. Um, so we're just going to talk a little bit about who HR Strategies is for those of you that aren't familiar with us. And then we're going to go into the Ask the Expert series where we're going to showcase um, specifically the solution and share with you um, features and uh, not necessarily new features, all, all new features, but some new features um, that are in the system. And we'd like to get as many questions that you may have specifically around any areas you're struggling with around compensation and see if we can address those um, also today or through follow-up sessions with each of you around your unique implementation configurations. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with HR strategies, we're an SAP gold partner. Uh, we were the partner of the year in uh, 2019 for SAP success factors across North America. Uh, we've recently expanded our practice with an acquisition in Australia to be a global organization. Um, we've done lots of global implementations, but now um, instead of being just in North America, we're certainly um, more globally with Australian India alliances and uh, ownership of equity and companies there. And um, we have a proven track record of implementing both HR projects as well as success factors specific implementations uh, for small, medium, and large size organizations. We have a robust team of approximately 40 Success Factors customers, and we've helped in total of about 160 customers get more out of Success Factors. Um, our claim to fame really comes from the fact that we're HR experts first, um, and then we got into the Success Factors practice in 2014. So just over seven years ago, and what we bring is that HR focus and lens to all of our implementations and our projects. So the great thing with partnering with HR strategies is we both understand success factors as well as HR. Um, so again, the premise is that we can help you get a lot more out of your technology. Okay. So let's um, move forward and, and talk a little bit now specifically around success factors in the compensation module. So it's a statistic that uh, we use um, mostly also when we're doing payroll demos um, because SAP's um, Employee Central Payroll is a prominent product out in the marketplace. Um, but we found this quote that 49% of people will leave a company if they are paid incorrectly twice. So payroll is obviously has to be accurate, but so does compensation uh, to our employees. And especially if we have people that are on some type of uh, commission-based pay structure inside the organization. So compensation has never been uh, you know, more important um, from the ability that if we pay people ineffectively, um, they're going to leave our organization. And ineffectively can mean wrong, or it can mean that we're not able to successfully illustrate and demonstrate um, how uh, we're paying them and the total compensation that we give to these individuals. Um, the people that leave organizations often leave um, for pay specific reasons. And a lot of that is when we do our exit interviews, we know that they don't understand holistically how we're paying them. And that's one of the importance uh, around compensation statements. So we're going to spend a bit of time on compensation statements today showing those, um, talking about the benefits and, um, and helping any of those that, of you that aren't using them um, to think about 
using those inside of success factors. So again, some of the areas that are most commonly noted um, in success factors around compensation are the ability to add rewards and recognitions, to manage stock options, to handle variable pay, um, to do these comp statements we talked about. Um, sometimes on these uh, sessions, they uh, people forget how to launch new cycles. So we can definitely show you that. If you've forgotten, it's very easy to do. Um, also, um, the ability to adjust workflows from form-based to hierarchy-based um, in, inside the solution suite if you're having problems with workflow, um, doing any type of compensation modeling and budgeting in here. And then we're going to spend a little bit of time on SAP commissions, which is new to success factor suite, um, but not new in the marketplace. Um, and we'll talk about that as well through today's presentation. Okay. All right. So let's um, tab over here and get into the demo environment. Um, I may have uh, Pankaj, who's one of our compensation experts, was scheduled to join me today. His family's um, struggling with both a new baby and a COVID outbreak, unfortunately. Um, he was hoping to make it, but I haven't seen him attend yet. Um, so if we can't get as deep into answering some of your questions today as we'd like to, um, certainly we can take your questions away and get back to you guys individually. So you're all familiar um, with the Success Factors homepage. Um, you know, this has been remodeled and there's a new homepage called WorkZone um, that has just hit the marketplace. Um, that's pretty exciting. And so we're going to do an upcoming session on WorkZone. But if any of you want to know more about WorkZone uh, prior to that, feel free to ping me. And my contact details will be at the slide at the end of today's session. So we talked about um, comp statements. So I'm just going to jump in and show you comp statements uh, specifically right out of the gate. Um, so when I go down and look at uh, my overall compensation data and information in our demo environment here, you'll be able to see that uh, Jeff's got a mid admin access as well as a manager access. So he's seeing some of the things that we might not always want them to see as an employee, like their comp ratio and their range annotation and their uh, history. But what I wanted to do just specifically today was to go here so that we can look and view an actual comp statement. Um, so as I mentioned early in my presentation, these comp statements are really important for multiple things. Uh, one is, uh, you know, our employees want to know at the end of the year and at the end of our merit cycles, um, you know, where they sit as far as overall financial remuneration. But financial remuneration is not everything that we offer to employees. Obviously, uh, we often have all kinds of other benefits and perks, anything from parking passes to gym memberships to uh, discounts at Weight Watchers to, um, uh, you know, rewards, um, specific points programs that we might be doing, uh, obviously our overall benefit programs. And what we want to be able to do on our comp statement is be able to bring all that data and information in, in one place and have them be able to totally see their overall benefits and financial compensation here inside the solution suite. Okay. So that's what I want to remind you around comp statements. So there are standard templates. You can pull all that data and information in. You can create custom portlets. And obviously, as you can see there, we can um, really change the look and feel of those with a little bit of effort as well, should we choose to. So let's go into compensation. One of the first things that we note that a lot of people are not using inside the system is the rewards and recognition capabilities inside of compensation. So there is the ability um, inside of compensation to create a number of different reward programs um, inside the system. And they can be financial or they can be point-based um, inside the system. So here, what we're doing as looking at this is Hill as a manager, I can come in here and I can see uh, my employees' uh, previous history and I can see my own rewards that I have gotten and received here from uh, that perspective. 
So if I want to come in and maybe give Faith one of my employees, um, if I can spell Faith correctly, uh, a reward here, I could come in and choose Faith, and then I can choose one of the three programs that I have. So I can just give her a kudo, uh, thank you type thing with no pay um, incentive. I can give her a peer appreciation award, or I can go in and give her what we call our best run rewards. Um, and this is the ability here again for us to set up and configure this. So we can come in and we can try to recognize her. And these are all configurable as you're all familiar with in success factors. We can have as many types of rewards we want to do. So am I going to give her a team player award, um, something to do with our customers? a product breakthrough award or business driver award. And again, as I said, they're all configurable. So I'll choose the customer success award. And then I can pick what level of contribution she um, had here inside the system. So I'm gonna say she was a rock star in this particular instance. And it will come up automatically and make a recommendation based on how we've configured the rewards to work. So it's recommending here that I can give her, should give her a $2,500 award for this. Now, these numbers can be different from every company. You don't have to give out $2,500 rewards. Uh, some organizations uh, give out gift cards, um, movie passes, um, small nomination uh, awards as well. So you, again, you can create this and utilize it in your organization without necessarily having to break the bank here. Um, you can see this is the range that I have, but I could put in a custom total. And we can, as we do elsewhere inside the system with success factors, we can um, put in the requirement if we're putting a custom amount to change the workflow um, specific to get approval for that. So once we pick the award we want to do, we can write um, specifically our message as to why she was uh, a rock star. As always, you go above and beyond to prove you're a rock star. And then simply once I've created the message, I can click send and I could send um, faith on through the approval workflow if there's a workflow required or directly if there was no workflow required. You can see here, I have a budget for my best run rewards of $40,000 and I'm presently sitting at $31,052 of that reward eligibility. So that's what I've been giving as Jeff Hill specifically here um, for this reward. Okay. Um, if, are there any questions specific to rewards? If you have any questions at any time, please feel free to um, go to the Q&A session on the top of your tab. You can pose those to me directly if you don't want anybody else to see your questions and who you are, or you can um, specifically ask the questions to the group as well. So one of the things uh, about rewards and recognition is a lot of organizations may have invested in actually reward uh, programs. We talked about the ability here to uh, allocate points. So instead of dollar amounts, I could have allocated points. So if we are using a third party reward system around points, that point total um, can move from here into those reward programs. And part of what um, Success Factors has done is uh, build alliances specifically as well with a number of um, point reward systems. So we can actually embed right here in success factors, um, either the um, Blackhawk incentives or the Exoday um, incentive product. And also in our app center, there's one called Job Points. Um, that's an app that you can layer on top of success factors to actually be able to create and maintain uh, a point system inside of success factors. So we're allowing a much more embedded capability to extend this type of rewards and incentives where they have a catalog where they can redeem them through right here inside of compensation as well. Okay.
So let me go back to my demo screen. Oops. There we go. And let's go back into our compensation and look at our actual reviews. So we're gonna go into an annual salary equity and incentive plan um, for Jeff Hale's employees inside the solution suite. So as you guys are familiar with, and some of you may be just investigating compensation and not have it turned on. So for some of you, this will be uh, a bit of a review and a bore, um, but hopefully you'll still remember or see some things that you never turned on in day one that you may want to turn on going forward. But again, um, here is Jeff's employees specifically here. And you can see that I can open up their profile, open up their achievements if we're using continuous performance management. I can even do promotions right from here. And this can be done for people that run compensation just as a standalone product and not use Employee Central. And then I can go in and look at the performance versus potential matrix um, should I have succession planning also turned on inside the solution. We're bringing in um, all the performance scores. We're bringing them directly in this demo environment from success factors, performance management. But again, we can bring these performance scores in if you're using compensation from a third party as well inside the solution. Uh, we're looking at current pay data and information. And you can see we can view uh, currency in employees local currency or we can change that to the planner currency and see everything in the US dollars or Canadian or um, Swiss francs or whatever it is that you guys um, where you come from are using from a currency basis inside the solution. Um, I love this budgeting feature. I'm sure you're all using this but this allows me to come in here and see again what my total budget is, how much I've spent and how much I still have left to allocate. And it changes dynamically as we're making changes inside the solution suite. What we also see up here is our metrics. So some of the metrics specific to compensation um, are available right here on our screen. And these are live drill downable as are all the metrics. We also have insights, which are um, the dashboard widgets that you can have on your home page. Again, that we can view and see right here. So if you don't have insights turned on in these page, um, it's a good idea to do that so that you never have to navigate back to your home page or go to report center to see your compensation specific data and information inside the system. We also have show me feature, um, which I'm hoping all of you are using. And this is the ability um, to embed inside and on each of your pages uh, videos to tell your managers uh, again how to access um, and how to actually uh, do what they need to do on each and every of the pages that they're in. When I um, started to share my window I didn't share the volume so you can't see, you wouldn't be able to hear this but the idea is um, instead of having to do continual training you can use the show me feature throughout the application to allow people to understand and or remind them because sometimes they're only going into compensation once a year uh, to do an annual merit increase uh, exactly what they're going to do inside the solution suite as well. Um, it's important to note you can see these error arrows. It means that a lot more data and information is available in each and every one of these sections. And what you decide to turn on in this section, again, is a, a configuration. And you can allow people even to change that here. So I can come in, oops, I clicked the wrong button there, sorry, column button. So I can come here and under my employee information, you can see here, I have overall performance rating, job title, hire date, and pro rating visible. But I can um, choose other columns that I may want to have here and the same um, for any of the areas that we're in, you can see that we can speci specify what it is we want visible here. And also you're seeing firsthand that we can allow people to configure it unique to themselves should you choose to allow them to do that, or you can lock the configuration down so everybody sees the same 
um, basic data and information. For some of you, you might be going prorating. I didn't know you can prorate. Hopefully you all knew that, um, but this is basically setting rules up in the back that um, lets us know about eligibility based on them potentially being a new hire or being in um, maybe they're on a performance and improvement and plan, so they're not eligible. Again, you can create all the rules around eligibility here. Um, you can have as many of these different columns and you can color code them any way that you want to. And obviously, if you're not uh, doing country specific adjustments, you wouldn't need to see that here. Um, but we want to make sure that you all knew that company specific adjustments were available here. Um, you can bring in, if you own, um, third-party market pay data and information. And here you can bring that um, specific data in to the system. And we can see uh, mins and maxes here um, that we can use to compare uh, with, which helps us come up with these, um, uh, you know, comp ratios as well, um, based on market pay or our own salary data grades inside the solution. Um, from a merit pay perspective, which is what's most commonly used uh, in success factors, you can view it both in dollars or percentages here in the system. And you can create rules around um, making these changes. So here's our merit guidelines that we put in place based on how people have performed in the system. And if we try to go above the merit guidelines, so if we try to take up, um, then up, you can see we have options here. So we can um, say to them, yeah, you can do that, but uh, provide an explanation. Or we can just say, no, you can't go outside your merit guideline. And we could also say, yes, you can provide an explanation and we can add an additional level of approval inside um, the, the workflow. So lots of capabilities to help make sure that anybody that's going outside of the recommended ranges can get the visibility they need throughout the overall organization. Okay. And again, uh, as I made that um, I here, you see that the amount of money I had went down from 10,000 to 8,400 here inside um, from a budgeting perspective. Um, enabling lump sums, um, final salary, whether you want to use comp ratios or not, again, all completely configurable for you here in, inside the organization. Um, if we go to complete compensation planning, it moves us along our approval process, right? Um, so that we can see where, where that is going inside the system as well. Now, lots of times in our demo environment, we have equity and variable pay broken out into separate um, sheets, but they could actually be added here as columns just to let you know that um, you do not have to do um, them as separate spreadsheets like we are doing here. Okay. Um, when I get into equity pay here, so this equity pay is for people inside of our organization or external to our organization, like boards of directors, and that um, that may be getting uh, a based on EBITDA or other underlying factors. So again, if I go in here and I open up uh, the profile for Ray. Um, specifically, I can start to see data and information uh, about um, trending on how he's been doing year over year inside the suite. So I can see him and his role, um, where he's been sitting, um, his salary position, his comp ratio. I can um, see how many S um, RSUs that he has here inside, and I can make changes right here if I want to, or again, on the spreadsheet-like capability. And I can click next and I can go to the next employee, Jackie, and I can view all of the state and information as well for her around how we're being paid out from a variable pay or an equity perspective. So here from a variable pay perspective, we can go in and see they're getting comped on business performance and individual, as well as um, uh, uh, here, um, there's one that gets um, specific relations to EBITDA. So we can see exactly how this is 
being calculated and what their payout and then their rates are inside the system. So we can go in and look at that. Um, a lot of organizations as they move and they IPO and they um, didn't realize that you could actually manage that right here inside of success factors. It is the capability. You could also bring in um, whoever you're using as your system of record for how your stock is performing. Um, and you could bring in that data and information so people could see um, what is actually happening uh, with the stocks inside the solution. And this gives us the ability to not only uh, do the grants uh, and maintain them, uh, but also uh, maintain data and information like block out dates, blackout dates and things like that, um, that employees need to know about around uh, what they can do around their stock specific options. And I showed you a bit of variable pay when we opened up and looked uh, at um, the one of the employees um, specific pay elements, um, but this is where you could come in and manage uh, that variable pay. Okay, so here we're seeing the business performance, the individual performance and the total incentive payout. And as I said, everybody can have a varying uh, ways to get paid. Um, this is often used for boards of directors. Um, also for people who have what we call very linear compensation payouts. So if uh, you know you get 5% for everything somebody sells, this is something that we can easily do inside of success factors if it's an, a linear. Um, but if we get into a compensation area that requires very advanced um, you know, sales type of commission or partner if you're in insurance or uh, you know, finance and you're using brokers or agents and you're trying to pay those specific people out, that's when um, you would use, um, let's see, get to the next step in the section, um, SAP commissions. So this is what's new this year under the success factors umbrella. It's not a new product. It's uh, it been out on the market for a number of years. SAP bought Calidus, which was a leading um, commissions product uh, and has been operating that under their sales portfolio for their CRM solution and sales commission and the sales learning uh, solution, Litmos. And most recently, they've announced that they've added this to the success factor suite and they're going to be creating <clears throat> the capability to do deep integrations inside of success factors to now allow anybody that needs to manage advanced commissions and agent pay and calculations. So both internal and external um, inside of success factors. So this, what this does is allows you to measure things like SPIFs and accelerators. So as I said, inside of compensation, <laughs> Excuse me. We can do um, direct, easy to calculate um, commissions inside the system. But as it gets complicated, where you know if you do your first, you sell your first five to ten widgets, it's X amount, and then ten to fifteen, it's a different amount, and then when you get to your quota, you know you start to get one point five percent your commissions. That's all stuff that's too complicated to do inside of the um, success factors compensation module. So this is again, where you would use SAP for commissions and anybody that's interested in this, we'll certainly um, happy to um, set up some time and discuss it with you individually. <laughs> we know that um, we talked about paying people as being important or we lose them. So, you know, that's your retention and attrition, but it's also, so uh, important for people to have clear visibility and how they're paying. I can't tell you how many salespeople I know um, have been in a sales for a long period of time is they say that when they get their commission check, it's kind of like a mystery to them as to um, where they calculated, how they calculated and how they actually got to that amount and to that number. So using a system like um, SAP commissions gives you clear visibility into that, that type of um, payment history as well. Okay, let me go back to the compensation module, not my email here. 
and uh, continue on around uh, compensation. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, just gonna make sure that I haven't missed anything specific to the um, areas that we talked about covering. I haven't seen any questions yet. Um, so I'm assuming that um, everybody is um, just taking in data and information, but doesn't have any specific questions. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna log out as uh, Jeff Hale and go in as Anna uh, around the administration side and um, spend a little time there for people as well. For those of you who are um, regular administrators of the system, um, you're going to see that I um, haven't adapted to the new <laughs> to the new min dashboard yet. I'm still an old school person. I need to spend some time on the new admin dashboard. When we do demos, of course, I live mostly on the other side of the solution. Um, so I don't live in the back end as much. So I'm still using um, the old dashboard, but I'm hoping you guys are adapting to the newer dashboard for compensation. Right. So when I look at compensation, we can go to our compensation home page here inside the system. And if you're thinking, you know, uh, like a lot of our customers do, they just get into compensation every year. They just don't know how to relaunch a plan for the next year. And if there's really no changes to the plan, it's super easy to be able to do that. You know, I can create a new template, but ideally if I'm just launching um, a 2021 plan, um, I can come in here and I can select the previous plan that I ran and I can associate it with the right variable pay components that I want to. And I can just step through um, creating the new plan. So changing um, the, the bonus start and end dates, the proration start and end dates, the physical year, the effective years. And then you can see that um, we can um, decide uh, if we're gonna just clone the eligibility rules or we're gonna create new eligibility rules. We got here um, which data files you would like to be copied to the new plan. So what do we want to bring forward inside here? And you can see that we're using the 2018 performance review template. So we're probably gonna want to update that. So we can just go in and edit um, the template to be able to change that to probably the 2020 or the 2021 template here inside the system. So it's super easy to go in and to be able to recreate um, those capabilities inside the solution. Okay. When um, we go to the admin center, um, one of the things that we are playing with this morning uh, around um, the solution set is even how to create these rules inside of um, success factors. So if we wanted to create um, uh, configure business rules, it's a what if kind of scenario on how we create rules inside the solution. So we can have uh, a bunch of existing rules. If we want to add new rules into the system, we can come in here and uh, maybe for that reward net recognition. The only rule we had around roles and recognition um, in the example that I gave you was that they were an active employee. Well, obviously there may be um, more specific elements that you want to create. So you can come in and uh, create new rules uh, inside the system and start date. Um, and you need to put a description here. Um, it's not mandatory, but you need to choose. So what object are we going to use for um, this specific rule? So maybe it's job information or employment details, or, you know, we can even say that, you know, compensation specific. So let's say job specific information. <clears throat> so, the variables here are if or um, that we want to, you know, when we're creating the variables in the system. Um, so we can uh, come down and we can look specifically 
uh, based on the job information. So maybe it's only for full-time employees. Maybe it's only for people uh, within a certain pay scale or a pay group. Um, maybe it's for people, um, supervisors only that have been a specific period of time inside their position. So again, it, this is our way to come in and create all those rules so that only those people that are eligible um, are able to, we're able to give those types of rewards and bonuses too inside the solution. All right. Any additional questions um, specific to that? Very quiet group today. Um, right. Anything anybody else wanted to see? If the only other area um, that I wanted to um, hope to show you that I would wanted Pancash to show you more specifically is the comp modeling and the creating of the budgets. It's something to be honest that I'm not, um, I don't excel at, um, but I think it's important to know that you can, oops, that you can specifically come in here when you're creating these types of programs and plans. Um, and if we go in and we look at one that's already existing and it has been created um, successfully here, um, these are the components that break this up. So what are our budgets? So again, we can create these um, based on comp modeling in the back. So when we go in and decide, you know, what it's going to be like to get a performance rating of one, two, three, four, five um, inside the system, that will tell us, especially if we bell curve, what our budget specifically is for our merit and our lump sum. Um, you know, so we can see here what our budget amounts and our percentages are. Again, we can see those eligibility uh, rules and how many people are actually eligible and if anybody um, was ineligible within the groups that we're running here. As well, <clears throat> the ability to create um, guidelines inside the system as well. Um, so we can see here uh, employees assigned, employees not assigned um, based on guidelines around uh, regulatory amounts, options, SE, SEUs. So this is more um, specific to stock inside the solution suite. So each of these have um, their own uh, worksheets that um, you can use and navigate and bring in to them. Uh, you can run, use this run check tool, which makes sure that there's no potential problems or errors in your configuration. So if you are going in and you're changing your sheets, you're going to want to do this. So even if we launch that new template that I was showing you, one of the things you would first come in and do is run this check tool uh, just to make sure everything mapped over effectively and there was no errors in it. The other thing is though, you could create a net new worksheet to add, or you could manage existing worksheets that are already in existence here um, as well. You can see they're stored, sorted by um, old to new. We can change that uh, filter and reverse it out. Um, and we can filter and find um, whether these plans are by planner or by individual in the system as well. Okay. So again, um, if there's no questions, that's a coverage of kind of what we wanted to take you through today to remind you and refresh you on compensation, uh, to let you know that there are deeper rewards and recognition programs available that you can take advantage of now uh, with these pre-built integrations into success factors, to let you know about the addition of SAP Sales Commission so that you can now um, effectively um, expand the lack, the lack of use, expand getting rid of those Excel spreadsheets uh, to maintain even more sophisticated types of compensation uh, inside of Success Factors now with the move of the sales cloud, formerly known as Calidus, um, into the Success Factors umbrella out there on the marketplace. And then we're here. Um, if you have any problems changing, uh, your templates, your forms, you want to turn on any of these features that you didn't see, anything as simple as even the, um, the show me feature with the videos. It's, it's a really great product and service. Um, one of the other products that I find aren't often used that I um, talk about in our presentations is 
the actual product, we have built into success factors called uh, presentations. And it allows you, depending again on what modules you're turning on, to bring in data and information into PowerPoint templates. So here's the standard uh, PowerPoint template. And you can see down here, I'm bringing dynamically in data and information from success factors. So if I simply double click on this, it puts it into PowerPoint mode. As I scroll through, I can see my standard templates. And this is where data and information starts to dynamically being brought in. So as Jeff Hale, I can see dynamically my uh, employees here, including even Sydney, who's a dot matrix employee. And if I wanted to click and open up anything about Jada Baker, um, I can see her direct reports. And if I wanted to go into her profile, I continue to click through inside the system. I can see where they're physically located. I can see um, how they're performing and their objectives. If, if I had that configured, I can see where they are in the performance potential matrix. Then again, if I wanted to compare Stephanie to Ben, I think it was that I clicked on, I can do a side-by-side -side comparison of how they're comparing. Um, this is an example of an annual uh, talent review that we're doing inside the system. And if, bear with me, I'm gonna get to conversation data soon. Um, here's objective and competencies, uh, you know, our call to action, uh, our high potentials from succession. And here, as I said, um, as I promised you, we're bringing in compensation data and information. So again, I can have this presentation, I build it once, and then if I have to go to a meeting, um, once a week, once a month, once a quarter, once a year, this is already built for me and I don't, do not need to uh, go in and, and build this feature in the future, okay? So that's another feature if you haven't turned on, uh, I love it and I highly recommend it inside of Success Factors. Well, thanks very much. Um, I don't see any questions. Uh, so I'll go back to the slide with my contact details. Uh, we're happy to do what we call complimentary health checks for you. So if you want us to look at your system in specific and uh, let you know um, what it is that you may um, not be turning on or have turned on in compensation or any of the modules of success factors, we're happy to be, do that for you. Um, oops, did I click one too far? I did. Let's try this again from current slide. Um, here's my email address and my phone number. If you want to give me a call or text me around this, um, HR Strategies is happy to help you make sure you're maximizing your investment in success factors. If you've only got compensation on and you want to talk about performance, um, if you'd like to look at a full suite of the products, uh, see demos, um, we're here for you. Uh, so please reach out. Thanks, everybody, and have a great day.